Hi, thanks for joining. My name is Anthony and I'm a solutions architect at AWS. And today I'm going to be going through DynamoDB global tables in terms of what they are, when to use them and how you can implement them using best practices. Before we go into the details of global tables, let's first set some context around the drivers of multi-region, since global tables, as you may have guessed, is a multi-region offering of DynamoDB. So what are some of the reasons you might want to consider making your application or database available in multiple regions? And the first one is latency. So perhaps you have a globally distributed user base and you want to make sure that your users can access your service with minimal response time. In which case you may consider a multi-region design where you place your application and or database in close geographical proximity to your users. The second one is business continuity and disaster recovery. Perhaps the availability of your service is absolutely crucial to your customer and therefore your business. So in the rare event of a regional degradation, you need to quickly recover and continue to serve your application. In which case, again, you may also consider a multi-region design where your application and or database is redundantly available across multiple regions. Finally, perhaps you have regulatory or compliance requirements, which mandates that you have contingency to withstand the rare occurrence of region-specific degradations. In which case, again, you would deploy your application across multiple regions. If any of those reasons apply to your use case, or you're at least considering them, then DynamoDB Global Tables may be of interest to you. DynamoDB is one of the first AWS database services to offer multi-region, multi-active replication. It's a fully managed and multi-region replication between two or more tables. It's completely serverless, so you don't have to manage any of the replication logic, the servers, or network connectivity between the tables. It all gets handled for you by DynamoDB. It's also important to note that when we talk about replication, we're talking about multi-directional replication. So every table that's configured for replication is also potentially an active write node. So you can write to any of the regional tables and expect the changes to propagate to all other tables. Now you might be wondering what happens when you're simultaneously writing data to multiple tables dispersed globally, which one then becomes the source of truth? Well, the objective of global tables is to eventually converge all of the tables to an identical state. I'll explain this more in detail in the next slide. And then finally, with global tables, you enjoy a higher availability of 99.999%. Let's explore the under the hood architecture of how global tables replicates across regions. Let's have a look at the diagram on the right, starting with region A at the top of the diagram. And let's say that the application wants to perform a put item in its in-region table. In this case, the write is going to occur synchronously and in-region, just like a put item in a standard table. So there's no performance or latency penalty experienced by the application. But from there, DynamoDB uses DynamoDB streams to asynchronously send the change event to an internal processor, which in turn sends it cross-region to the other replication target tables. Those tables would have their own processes, which can then start writing the changes to its own table. Typically, the replication to all other replicas completes within one second, depending on the regions of the involved tables. You're also able to monitor the replication latency through CloudWatch metrics. It's also important to point out here that all of the replicas operate independently of each other. In other words, in the rare event where any of the tables were to lose connectivity or become unavailable, it won't affect the availability of the replica. So as I mentioned in one of the previous slides, Global Tables aims for the eventual convergence of all of its tables data. Or in other words, the data becomes eventually consistent across all tables. But how does it achieve that if the data is constantly being written simultaneously across multiple regions? And the short answer is that the last write wins. So in this example architecture where the DynamoDB table uses a partition key only without a sort key, let's say that the applications in region A and region B approximately at the same time try to write to the same partition key of one. In which case, the initial put item will occur synchronously against the local table, and only after that, the change is pushed out for replication. Now, once the region B table receives the replication request, it will look at the timestamp of the original write in region A, and then compare it with its own version's timestamp. Then it's going to choose the most recent version. 
And the inverse of that is going to occur for region A's table where it receives the replication request from region B. It will compare the timestamps with its own version of the item and only write if the replication record is more recent. This does inherently mean that the older data can potentially be discarded and never written to the replica tables. It does, however, ensure that all tables will eventually converge into the same state, which is the objective of global tables. So what happens if any two tables lose connectivity with each other and causes the replication to temporarily stop? So in this scenario, each of the replicas are going to remain operational and they're going to continue to function independently, similar to how a single table would behave. This means that even if the connectivity is disrupted, your application can still access and modify data in each respective replica. Any pending replications during the connectivity loss are going to be queued up until the connectivity gets restored. And once the connection is back online, global tables will automatically begin processing these queued changes. And this is where the last write wins principle is important to understand. If the write timestamp of the queued item is older than the version of the item in the replication table, then the queued item is not going to be written to the replication table. But to be clear, you're not going to lose any data in this process. It just means that the last right wins principle is going to ensure that the newest item is the one that's reflected across all of your tables. Also note that you can monitor and alert on the replication latency and pending replication count metrics in CloudWatch. Because global tables are both multi-region and multi-active, this enables many different use cases depending on what your needs are. So let's review some high-level design patterns which serve different purposes according to what your application or business requirements are. So what if your application doesn't actually need to serve users in multiple regions, either because your application is specific to a country or a region, but you still want to take advantage of the disaster recovery and fast failover option? In this case, you could consider using global tables as a hot standby option only. That is, your application by default only reads and writes data from a single table in a single region. That table will replicate to another region table. However, that table is not going to be in any active use. That replica only comes into play during rare disaster recovery or failover events. So if your default table were to become unavailable, you could switch your application to point to the replica table for immediate failover. The main benefit of this pattern is that it gives you a fully managed and hot standby node. And since you're only writing to a single table, you can also avoid the issue of temporarily diverging states and expect consistency with your reads. Here's another one. What if your application had a globally distributed user base and you needed low latency reads, but write latency was less important? In this case, you could use this pattern where you write to a single primary node, but you can read from any node, or more specifically, read from the node with the closest proximity to the calling application. Similar to the previous pattern, this one allows you to avoid any write conflicts and diverging states, but at the same time enables low latency reads. The trade-off being that your write latency is potentially higher depending on where you write from. Finally, what if your application was fully global in nature, where you want low latency for both reads and writes, and they can occur in any region globally? Or maybe you want to ensure that you have full disaster recovery capabilities to account for any rare region degradations. And this is where you can use global tables to its fullest capabilities using the multi-region, multi-active configuration. That is, your application will both read and write from their in-region tables, and that data is fully replicated to other regions with eventual consistency. To prepare for the rare events of a region outage, you can configure your application to automatically switch over to one of the replica tables. Now, while this pattern provides the most robustness and lowest read-write latency, it does also mean that you need to account for the last write wins principle and design for eventual consistency. Now let's talk about the pricing aspect of global tables. So when you write data to a global table, as we know by now, these writes are replicated across multiple regions. However, it's important to note that these replicated writes are charged separately at a slightly higher rate compared to normal write capacity units. And we refer to these as replicated write capacity units. 
So every time you write data to a local table within your global table setup, you'll incur charges for both the local write capacity unit and the replicated write capacity unit for each replicated table. Additionally, you also need to account for the data transfer out costs between regions, which will also multiply by the number of replicas that you have. So while global tables are there to ensure data consistency and resilience, it's essential that you factor in these additional costs when planning your architecture. On the other hand, the storage, the read capacity units, and the global secondary indexes are billed at the same rate as standard tables. Before we wrap up, let's discuss a few other considerations that you want to make when adopting and implementing global tables. The first one is, as I just mentioned, the cost for storage and writes increases with each additional replica that we deploy. So it's crucial to keep this in mind as you design your applications and choose replication patterns. You should aim to strike a balance between availability, performance, and cost to ensure optimal resource utilization. The second one is that global tables offers flexibility in setup, and it caters to both new and existing tables. You can configure global tables seamlessly via API calls, SDK integration, CLI commands, or infrastructure as code, such as CloudFormation, for automated deployment and management of your global tables. Thirdly, it's important to note about transactions. So transactions are a feature of DynamoDB where you can group multiple actions like put or update together to perform an all or nothing atomic operation. So while transactional writes will continue to work for local tables, because of the asynchronous nature of replication, these changes can't be executed as transactions for replicas and instead will follow the usual last write wins principle to write data to replicas. Lastly, to guarantee that global tables can effectively perform replications across all replicas, it's crucial that all of your tables have sufficient capacity. So when you add a replica table to a global table, you will need to make sure that the same write capacity settings are specified. We also recommend that you use either on-demand or auto-scale provision capacity when enabling global tables. And that's to make sure that your tables can automatically adjust its capacity to your application's changing workload. We do also offer a wide range of prescriptive DynamoDB guidance, including more details about the routing strategies using Route 53, which I mentioned earlier. So please check out this link. For more comprehensive documentation about global table best practices, feel free to visit the link that you can see now or use the QR code. We also have a comprehensive playlist of similar short videos like this one to cover other aspects of DynamoDB. So make sure to check those out too. So that's a wrap. Thank you for joining today. Hopefully by now you have a better understanding of what DynamoDB global tables are, when to use them, and how you can implement them using best practices. Thank you.